script. Script? Yeah. You know, the fraternity row script. We're rehearsing your audition. Oh, I, I don't think we need to rehearse very much. I think we've got all parts down pat. Yeah, I think so, too. So what are you saying, that you're not really interested in taking the role of Laura on fraternity row? No. You're right. You're right. <clears throat> this is once-in-a-lifetime chance. Let's get back into the scene. Okay, right. So, uh, just to refresh my memory here. Uh, <clears throat> you're a student, I'm the teacher, and I'm married. And we got this, like, big attraction, and we're in my office, right? Where were we? Alone. Right. Yeah, and I say, uh... <clears throat> <clears throat> Laura, <clears throat> you're very beautiful, and you're also very young. I can't take advantage of you. Look, I know you're married, and I know I can only have a part of you, but have I ever asked for more? Look, Logan, make love to me now. I mean, even if it's just for this moment, make love to me now. That's very good. You're very convincing. Uh, then I say, um, I say, uh, oh, hell. Yes, you heard me right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm throwing my support to Herb Cowles because I believe Victoria Buchanan isn't qualified to be our next mayor. Be specific, Mr. Gordon. What changed your mind? You start out as Mrs. Buchanan's campaign manager. Now you're for Callison? Why, Mr. Gordon? Yes, why the sudden switch? Ms. Buchanan can run a newspaper. She can give orders and make commands. But running a city is a very different job. It takes different skills and different experience. The kind of experience that Herb Callison has acquired in all his years of public service. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this special edition of View on Land View. I'd like to thank. I just wish that Herb would smile more. We've practically given him the election remember, in the person of Roger Gordon. Day, your vote is all that matters. And cut. That's a wrap, folks. Mr. 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 You have any ideas? No way, I'm not running away. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I didn't mean to fight you. I'm sorry. You'd better go. Didn't you hear me? Go, leave. And don't ever come back. One Life to Live, brought to you by Pediacare, because a child's cold needs special care. You startled me. Look, perhaps we could begin again. My name is Gabrielle Medina. You are? It doesn't matter who I am. Just go and leave me alone. Please don't make me go. I don't want to go. I came here to meet you. I wish you'd come out of the shadows. Don't move. You're the person who saved me, aren't you? I need to know. Why is that so important to you? I'm not sure myself. I'm, I just need to hear you say the words. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. I was the one who saw you, lying on the ground, unconscious. In the cemetery? Yes, in that dress, in that party dress. I was sure you would freeze to death, so I covered you with my coat and carried you into the church. Are you satisfied now? Yes. More than that, I'm very grateful to you. Uh, anyone would have done that. But anybody didn't do it, you did. Yes, I'm sure I would have died if you hadn't carried next, me. Just next time. Don't go wandering around in a party dress in the middle of the winter. All right. I'll take your advice. 
You're smiling. Why? Why should that surprise you? If you stay any longer, your smile will go away. Why do you say that? I almost forgot again. Your ring. What ring? I found it in the pocket of the jacket that you gave me to keep warm. It's such a beautiful band. It must be very important to you. I, I was just waiting for the time to give it back to you. No, no, don't. What's the problem? I mean, I want you and uh, you want me. Well, yeah, but you see, it's not that easy. As much as I would like it to be that easy, it's not. See, the fact of the matter is... The fact is that you're married. I mean, I haven't No, forgotten. no, look, no. It's all over with Tina. I mean, she's, she's, she's gone. She's toast. Right. And you're on the rebound, yes? No. No. See, I, I'm going through this divorce, right? And I have no idea how long it's going to take to settle with it. The but I know thing this bit, too, right? You don't want to hurt me. Look, I've been forewarned and I'm forearmed. Look, but I don't care. Well, look, you're uh, pretty inexperienced, right? I think you need to care. You need to be careful. Well, I don't care. Well, then, I guess I'm going to have to... Be careful for the both of us. Listen, um, I would never forgive myself if we let this thing go too far too fast and I end up hurting you. Yeah, but you're the one who's hurting right now. I mean, you're the one whose marriage has just disappeared and then Tina taking your son away. And I could help you handle all this if we were just close. If you were loved, you know, if you would just give us a chance. You got a good point there. Uh, and you're probably right if we were um, together. I'm sure that would be wonderful. But uh, there's one more thing. And now this is a killer point. I mean, th there's something in a relationship that, that is missing. Uh, missing? Yes. And it's a very important something. So important, in fact, that I don't think we could go on a moment longer without it. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going anywhere, Roger. But, Victoria, I've said my say. Not to me, you haven't. I didn't hold anything back. I meant everything I just said. I didn't expect you to like it. Like it? Like it? I feel that you just kicked me in the face. Right, I have to take a phone call. Do you want to wait in the car? Uh, no, absolutely not. I'll wait right here. I knew you'd react this way. I'm sorry. No, you're not sorry. You knew exactly what you were doing. You planned it this way, but why? Why would you be this cruel? Maybe I was just returning one act of cruelty for another. When was I ever cruel to you? When have you ever been anything else? It took me a long time to realize it, but now I know what a fool, what a little wimp I've been. That's ridiculous, Roger. I've always admired you for your strength and your integrity and your courage. Yes, so you've said repeatedly. I suppose you thought, uh, well, I'll just keep him around uh, and give him a little a admiration and, and he'll stay around. No. Just in case. No. No, my God, that's not true. I never, I never kept you around just because you were convenient. You were my friend. You were my dear friend. If you blame me for my inability to know which way my heart was leading me, then, then I understand your anger. But I cannot stand by and watch you just give up on all the dreams and the ideals we had for this town. Roger, don't just stand there. Say something. Explain this to me. After everything we've meant to each other, you owe me an explanation. Yes, Victoria, as a matter of fact, I do. I should have told you before this thing went this far. Well, you didn't. So why don't you tell me now? You left my campaign and you joined Herb's campaign. Now, what in God's name justifies a decision like that? 
Pinky, what is the point in rehashing all this? Now, come on, it's just gonna upset you more, so let me take you home. No, I couldn't possibly be any more upset than I am right at this very second. I want to hear what he has to say. Roger. Clint, she deserves to hear this. Yes, you're right. We share the same ideals and values. That's all well and good, you see. But I can't, I won't support a candidate's platform when I find his or her personal code of ethics completely reprehensible. Now you're telling me I'm immoral? Honey, we've heard all we have to hear from this guy. Now let's go. No. Go, yes, go ahead. I didn't think you wanted to face the truth. No, if it were the truth, I would gladly face up to it, but it's not. This is just an attack out of nowhere. Nowhere? I'm just supporting your position. You remember when we first started this campaign, we studied a lot of various campaigns, successful and unsuccessful, to see what we could learn from them. Yes, and our watchwords were openness and honesty. What happened to those words, Roger? You tell me. One of the campaigns we studied was Kendall Brown's run for governor. His politics were innovative. His ideals were challenging. His leadership skills second to none. He did everything right. Up until the day certain photographs appeared in the paper. Kendall Brown's trip, skiing trip to Colorado. And there he was sitting in front of the fire and on his lap was a woman who wasn't his wife. And I remember exactly what you said. If he can't be trusted in his personal life, he certainly can't be entrusted with the public good. How in God's name can you compare me to Kendall Brown? If anyone should know what a faithful wife I have been, it is you. I'm not talking about the way you treated Clint. I'm talking about your treatment of me. You lied to me. You deceived me about your true feelings for months. If I deserve such shabby treatment, what can the voters of Landview expect? Dorian, let's go. No, you go ahead. You have that uh, speech to give at the Booster Club lunch. Yes, yeah, I'm not sure I have the stomach for lunch. Oh, come on, Herb. You make the speech. I'll eat the chicken a la king. Dorian? Uh, no, no. I'll, uh, I'll meet you later at campaign headquarters, OK? I swear I do not know what to say to you. I don't know whether to laugh or cry or scream. Well, maybe you shouldn't say anything. Maybe you should just look inside yourself, search your conscience. My conscience? My conscience is clear. But the faith that I had in you, the trust and the respect that I took for granted? See, that's it. That's it. You've just hit the nail on the head. You've always taken me for granted. Good old Roger. He'll be there as usual. Well, good old Roger has had enough. Good old Roger won't be on your leash anymore. No. No, Roger, no. We've heard all we have to hear from this guy. Now let me take you home. Yes, go. Go, go home with your husband. Stay put in your fancy house. Maybe then you'll stop toying with me and everybody else in this town. Well, tell me what I'll say anything, do anything what? Well, again, it's something that is very important. And if we don't have it, we might as well just like throw in the towel right now and just wash our hands of the whole thing. Well, tell me what. Give me a clue. A clue. Violins. <laughs> what? Violins. And candlelight. And mulled wine in front of a fireplace. And taking a walk through the garden. In springtime, when things are just starting to bloom. Right around twilight. And little tiny gifts, like uh, perfume, maybe chocolates, maybe taken off for a quiet weekend in some country inn. Wow, I, I never knew so much was involved. I guess my uh, inexperience is showing. Well, I got the idea that you're a fast learner. In fact, what, you learned how to act all in one afternoon, right? I think you can handle being courted. Courted? Yes. Oh, I like the sound of that. It's so English. Oh, good. Then you should be pretty good at this. But, you know, courtship is very hard work. I mean, we're talking about you just having an ordinary day, just sitting around, very uneventful, and then whammo. Whammo? Whammo what? These long stem roses, a dozen of them, just appear out of nowhere with your name on them. Oh, how awful. Well, sometimes you could be like home, Watching TV night, got your hair up and curly, got that mud all over your face and everything, and he'd like this knock at your door, and it'll be a chauffeur, and, and he'll have himself a limousine, and he'll take you out there and put you in the back end and take you to meet yours truly. Oh, torture. And wherever he takes you, there's going to be like this champagne, some caviar, if you're into that kind of thing, music. I mean, is there no peace for the wicked? No, man, no, not at all. You're just going to have to get used to this, whether you like it or not.
Well, I think I will have to try. But, um, what I said before, I mean, uh, I have uh, never been courted before. Well, then, I think it's high time that you were. But if this is your ring, you should have it Just back. keep... Not just for the ring, but for saving me the other night. I know I've said it before, but I, I will always be grateful to you for that. It wasn't just an accident you finding me, was it? What do you say? Uh, I assume you look out that window quite often at the graveyard. You live here, right? Yes. Well, then you also know my other reason for coming here. I'm very flattered that you've offered your home to our organization, Outlook House. Your friend came to... Yeah, 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 I know all about that. You took one look and you don't like it, right? That's not what I said. I think that your house is in a very good location. It has a lot of space, fresh coat of paint, a little elbow grease. It would be a perfect place. I'd love to see the rest of it. Go ahead. I was hoping for a guided tour. You think I'd be unkind? I think you would be frightened. You're wrong. I'm not afraid. Won't you please come out and show me? Step out of the shadow and show me yourself. Vicky, I'm at an absolute loss for words. That's a first. No, I mean it. I mean it. One look at you, and I could see how Roger's defection hit you. People get hit all the time, Dorian. You take that to heart. This is the pain talking, Vicky. Look, I know that Roger meant more than just a mere political advisor. There was something personal and, and close between the Dorian! Two. I just didn't know how personal and close that relationship Dorian, was. Dorian, I know you mean well, but if you don't mind... Clint, yes. Adios. Well, uh, looks like Roger's been trapped again. Someone better save him. Excuse me. My paper's been good to you, Roger. How about an exclusive? The real lowdown on you and Vicky. Listen, one more remark. Uh, uh, like Roger, that. Roger, I really must talk to you. You don't mind, do you? Thanks, Dorian. Oh, that's the least I could do. Roger, I want to tell you how much I admire your moral courage in stepping forward today. Dorian, I... Well, you know, I guess I'm just not used to a woman who's capable of understanding such things as moral courage. <laughs> well, I guess you've uh, just been hanging around the wrong women. Uh, may I make a suggestion? Why don't we uh, repair to some place quiet where we can have a little lunch and discuss campaign strategy? Hmm? Well, Dorian, you read my mind. <laughs> Honey, let me take you home and we'll forget all this. Forget it? I would give anything on this earth if I could forget it. Still, there's something that I want to ask you about. Uh, about your audition scene? No, about the courting. I mean, when exactly is it going to start? Well, I can't tell you exactly. I mean, that's the whole thing about romance. I mean, the key element here is surprise. Oh, really? I mean, you never know. What to expect, Miss Medina? <laughs> but still, I mean, on this romance thing, I mean, mm -hmm. anyone can join in, right? Well, you know, I'm a fellow of the 90s. <laughs> sure, anything's possible. Well, in that case, I'm out of here. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the matter? Don't you like the idea of this courtship? Oh, I love it. I just can't wait to get started. So you uh, better keep your eyes open, Casanova, because uh, anything's possible. You didn't scream. You ran away. Why? Ran away? I came here to talk business about your house. 
When your friend came to offer this place to Outlook, she didn't mention how much it was going to cost us. I didn't say anything about selling or moving out. Uh, I must have misunderstood when... when your friend came to Father Valone. You do know this woman, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Lily's my best friend. She takes care of me. I guess she felt I was too alone up here and talked to the priest and into moving me out of here. Father Valone and I would never make you move out don't of here. Don't come near me! All right. Lily's probably right. I am too isolated up here. But if this is your home... Yeah, well, I'm not the only one who needs a home nowadays. And it sounds like your, uh, your Outlook project can help a lot of people. Yes, that's, that's the idea. Well, I'll think about it, okay? Take all the time you need. You can get in touch with me through Father Valone at the church. Well, then, goodbye. No, hold it. I got a question for you. The night I found you. You mean the night that you saved me? Yeah, whatever, whatever. What were you doing in the cemetery? I mean, why there of all places? Oh, well, why does it really matter why I was there? The point is, you saw me unconscious and took me to safety, and that's something I won't soon forget. What do you want to forget? I didn't say I wanted to. I was at a party earlier that night, a benefit for the Outlook House, and I had too much champagne. Way too much. By the time I got to the grave, I, I... I guess you were right. I was trying to forget something. Something or someone. How do you know me so well? I guess I know something about pain. The champagne just made me more depressed. I, I had to leave the party. The only place I wanted to be was in that cemetery, at that grave, where... Was a man that meant a great deal to me. I remember kneeling down and having the cold wind against my back. The next thing I remember was waking up in a very warm church, thanks to a kind, unknown stranger. Does that answer your questions? No. No? Why? I've just told you everything about that. All you told me were the bare facts. I want to know what your feelings are. Feelings? Yes. Shall I start with how alone I felt that night? How I was the only one in the world. I couldn't count on anyone. <laughs> Why am I telling you all this? Because maybe you know me too. I've been all alone and lost many times myself. How did it happen? How did what happen? You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Oh, you mean the face? Well, I guess fate. I had an accident that changed my life. I'm sorry. I, I, I better be going. Yes, of course. Look, if you, uh, if you can give Outlook House some thought. If you decide to move, we would certainly be interested in acquiring this property. Very interested and very grateful. Uh, goodbye again. Yeah, hold on, hold, hold on. Would you consider coming back again? I had planned to. Well then, would you do me a favor? Make it soon? plan to do that, too. Bye. Bye. Hi, Mom. Hi, 
Hi, can I have my key, please? Oh, hi, Tarby. Mm -hmm. Look, you've got a card from your friend Charlotte in Mendora. Oh, great, thank you. Hmm. Well, I haven't seen you in such a good mood in ages. Oh, does it show? Oh, no, not in the slightest. So, <laughs> who is he? Mum, why do you think every time I'm happy that there must be a man involved? All right. <laughs> I think I'm falling in love. Are you happy? Not necessarily. Well, you should be. He is the most wonderful and fabulous man in the world. And I have reason to think that uh, he's falling in love with me as well. So, are you going to say something? Yes, I am. I'm going to give you my standard lecture on the subject. Of course, you won't listen to me. But, darling, before this infatuation goes any further, would you try to hear these two words? Be careful. Mummy, don't worry. Oh, I have to worry, darling. I'm your mother. And you're much too young and inexper inexperienced to realize that men say all sorts of things. And they promise all sorts of things. And they don't mean a word of it. Is Deborah Medina? Yes, I'm Deborah Medina. Ah, then these must be yours. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Oh, they're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Mum, what were you saying about uh, warning? They're very nice flowers. They're very nice. But it still depends on the man and his intentions. See for yourself. Surprise. And it's just beginning. Cord. So, uh, does he pass the inspection? Well, the man's got style. He's also got a very good pedigree. Mom, he's not some kind of golden retriever. Oh, I know. He's a Buchanan. That's better, much better. <laughs> Mommy. I'm only teasing. Well, I'm glad to see that Cord got to California and back without returning to the clutches of Tina. Yes, he's going full steam ahead with his divorce. And uh, we started something new today. Our courtship. My little girl. You're not such a little girl anymore, are you? You're really falling in love with this young man. Yes, I am. I'm falling head over heels. But now I don't know how to reciprocate. What? You mean now he thinks you should send him flowers? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just that we said that, you know, we would surprise each other. I wouldn't worry about it. Just follow your instincts. Yeah, but, Mum, if I had, you know, just a little bit more experience, I'd oh, just well, feel more confident. Oh, well, if it's experience you're looking for, then I have enough of that for both of us. If you'll let me, I'll give you some helpful hints. Oh, great, Mummy! I can't think of anything I'd rather do. That's it. What? Come with me. I know exactly what our next move ought to be. Great! <laughs> I don't want any lunch. I want to try and understand what happened. Vicky, there is no big puzzle to figure out here. Roger was very clear about his reasons for quitting your campaign. No, I'm not even questioning that anymore. If he thinks I've been unfair to him, well, that's his opinion. I can't argue with him about that. But to question my motives? My integrity and my values? He's a loose cannon right now. You can't take anything he says or does seriously. But the press will. The people in this town will. Well, now, be, be honest with me. Are you real worried about the people in this town? Is it the press that you're worried about? Yes, it is. Oh, I guess I'm also a little worried about Roger himself. <laughs> Did you see him in a huddle over in the corner with Dorian? What was that all about? I have no idea. Oh, my God, he's an intelligent man. You ought to know better than to be taken in by her obvious tactics. She's just going to use him now to get her elected and to put herself in a position of power. Dorian's a very attractive woman. He, would, oh. he wouldn't be the first man I was taking Please, a run at I her. I would never in a million years believe that he would fall for that... that two-faced manipulator. If that's his taste, then I don't know the man, and I never did. You know, Vicky, I'm not completely stupid. Or naive. I know that you'd prefer to have Roger beside you, both in your campaign... And personally. No. No, God, no, I'm sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. Why be sorry? The truth is the truth. But there's another truth you have to face up to also. Roger is gone. I'm still here. And I'm willing to, f to fill whatever void he left in your campaign and in your life. But it's a two-way street 
for the sake of the election and our future, if we have a future, you're gonna have to pull yourself together and you're gonna have to do it right now. I'm trying, Clint. I'm trying. Trying isn't going to do it, Vicki. Trying will not do it. You just have to flat do it. Now, starting from this moment right on, you're gonna have to stop acting like a woman scorned and start acting like a candidate who has a whole new agenda. Now, can you do that or can't you? You're right, I can't continue like this. But I feel very hurt and very betrayed. I know that, and I'm sorry. Well, it's not your fault. Whatever Roger's done, he did for his own reasons. I just wish that I could understand them so I could get over it and go on. And I know that you need to understand it. But Vicki, maybe you've got it all turned around. You know, maybe it, maybe it isn't the way Roger ended things you have to come to grips with. Maybe it's the way things started out in the first place. I don't understand. Well, when you first met Roger, he was an idealistic young man. You met him a lifetime ago, and he had very high ideals. But people change. Life changes people. Maybe he lost those ideals. No, maybe, he's, maybe he was just faking it. Maybe he was just going through the motions because he figured that was the only way to get to you and to have you. No, that's impossible. You absolutely sure of that? Yes, I'm absolutely sure. I know, Roger, I know he could never do that. God, who am I kidding? I didn't think he was capable of half the things he's done to me in the last two days. I guess he has been fooling me all along. Well, maybe it is a possibility that you should at least consider. But if it's true, Clint, what were his motives? What is the man after? Well, the maitre d' said we'd have a table in about two minutes. Oh, well, there's certainly no rush. Give us time to take a breather after all the excitement at WVLE. Yeah, well, you call it excitement. I call it a necessary evil. Oh? It was very hard for you to uh, say all those unkind things about Vicky. Well, it's always hard to speak ill of somebody, especially somebody you used to respect. Used to? Yes, it's no secret of how I felt for Victoria. But she used those feelings for her own selfish ends. When I discovered that, I lost all respect for the woman. How tragic. No, oh, no, the tragedy would have been if I had never seen the true Victoria Lord Buchanan. At least this way, I can do what I can to keep her from manipulating her way into the office of mayor. Well, Roger, I am certainly sorry this whole thing was so difficult for you, but uh, I'll tell you, it takes a special kind of man to put his ideals before his heart. Well, thank you. Listen, I don't want you to think I'm just turning away from Victoria. I'm really looking forward to the prospect of working for Herb. <laughs> well, it's always nice to be back in the winter, isn't mm. it? But in truth, I must tell you, I didn't know if Herb had it in him until you joined the campaign. What, are you having problems with Herb's platform? Oh, no, his ideas are just fine. I just wasn't sure if he was aggressive enough. But now we have a winning combination behind him. Well, I hope you're right. Of course, I don't know anything about the inner circle of Herb's campaign. And of course, you, if you could give me some clues about who to watch out for, who to avoid. The politics behind the politics? Exactly. Well, I'd love to, Roger. I've disagreed with Vicky on many things over the years, but uh, I've always admired her taste in men. Gabrielle! Excuse me, but aren't you my sister? Oh, Deborah, I'm sorry I didn't hear you or see you. You seem a million miles away. Yes, yeah, so I do have a few things on my mind. Well, such as? Well, aren't we nosy and perky this morning? <laughs> what a terribly silly word. But yes, I suppose I am perky, yes. Hmm? And why is that? Not why. Who? You found a new young man. That's wonderful. No, he's not particularly new or young, but he most definitely is wonderful. Ah, Cord. Well, yes. But before you say anything, he came back from San Diego and he bought me this enormous panda. It's called Fergus. Mm, great. Did he also bring you greetings from Tina as well? Well, for your information, he's going full steam ahead with the divorce. And he and I started something new today, our courtship. Courtship? Yes. It's kind of an old-fashioned, passionate, romantic thing. And if you don't believe me, I can show you the flowers that he sent me today. Oh, I'm... Uh, one thing I can say for Cord, he knows how to push the right buttons. 
Oh, yes, and I mean, he's not the only one. I've got to reciprocate, and so I asked Mummy to help me, and she came up with this great idea. Oh, I bet she did. Yeah, she's talking to the hotel chef now, and we're preparing a picnic basket, and then I'm going to go over to the banner and surprise him. Can you imagine the surprise on his face? Oh, yes, you'll be very surprised, but you know, there are some men that don't like surprises. Well, not Cord. I mean, he wants an unpredictable, fun relationship. Deborah, would you please slow down? I know you don't want to hear this, but don't get your hopes too high. Why do you have to spoil everything? Why can't you just let me enjoy this? I'm trying to save you from the pain. Romance and love don't always go together with men. I learned that from bitter experience. Well, you are bitter, and I am not. Deborah, please, I'm sorry. Wait. Look, are you heading over to the banner right now? I told you I'm waiting for the picnic basket. Meantime, I'm going to go and change. And so I don't have time to listen to your doom and gloom. In an hour's time, I'm going to be sitting with Cord, having a picnic, with or without your approval. Well, come on in here, pretty lady. I was just fixing to pour some tea. You were going to pour tea? Yes. Brewed by yours truly. Oh. Two lumps, right? Yes. I also fixed you some of those uh, finger sandwiches that you like. Use my own fingers to do it. You run me a bath to make me tea and sandwiches? Why are you being so good to me? Well, I'll try and put you in a good mood again. I don't deserve it. You're being very sweet to me, and all I can do is carry on about Roger. I don't hear any carrying on. Maybe I'm doing something right. Yes, you are. You always do. Well, not always, but sometimes. Sometimes I manage to get lucky and put a smile back on that face again. Thank you. I love that smile, you know. And I've missed it. Well, I'll do my part to keep it there, then. You don't have to pretend with me. I'm Ricky. not pretending. While I was upstairs, I was thinking about what you said, and, you, and you're absolutely right. Whatever Roger's reasons were for doing what he did, they don't matter. Now I'm going to concentrate on the campaign and on our family. And thanks to your honesty and your support, I know that that's the only thing that counts. Vicky. What? <sighs> Nothing. You're absolutely right. We're going forward and we're going forward together. Together. Oh, hi! Hi. You. What's going on? Oh, about Gabrielle, I'm sorry. I, I knew I should have done a better job. No, 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 no. You did a you did a great job. She was here. What? Yeah, she just left. Gabrielle and the priest. No, no, no. She came here alone, and she took a look around, and I guess she liked what she saw because she's thinking about using this as for Outlook Project. And, and she felt like she knew that I was the one that saved her. Are you telling me she knew who you were? No, 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 no. She recognized your voice, didn't she? No, of course not. It's changed since the operation. I've changed so much. But she felt like we had a special connection. And the longer she stayed, the softer, the more gentle, and more loving she became. Um, it's had a great effect on you, too. Um. <laughs> and she said she's coming back. She's coming back? Yeah, isn't that great? I mean, I didn't yeah. scare her off. Well, I told you, you're no monster. Well, I guess you were right, Lily. I mean, she accepted me the way I, I am. Yeah? She didn't run away. M maybe I can stop her from being self-destructive. Max, I'm really glad the meeting went well. And I'm really thrilled you're so optimistic, but, but I have to ask you a question. Where does all this lead? Why worry about that now? I'll take it one step at a time. Well, Max, that's fine and good. That's, that's wonderful. But you have to face up to the facts at some point. Are you going to tell? Gabrielle, who you really are. Lily, I don't know. I honestly don't know, okay? 
Gabrielle, come on, don't be silly. I got plenty of time. Well, I'm very glad, because when I heard you were back in town, I rushed right over. I'm really quite desperate. Oh? It's about Outlook House. You see, Cord, we don't have enough money to hire a public relations firm, and Father Valone and I know nothing about publicity. That's when I thought of you, your connections with the newspaper. I was hoping you'd give me advice on how to give this project the right exposure. Wow, that sounds like a pretty big undertaking. Yes, I know it's a lot to ask. It really is. But Outlook House is such hey, a good... please, you don't have to sell it to me. I'm already sold. So you'll help us? Sure. Uh, let me see if I can get you a chair. Maybe we can talk about oh, it right um, now. Oh, um, actually, I don't know how you feel. I've been running around all morning and I'm starved. Maybe we could talk about this over lunch. My treat? Oh, free food. <laughs> well, I've never been one to turn one, that down. I didn't Let's think go. you would. You got a taste for it. Maybe a little Italian? Oh, well, awesome. Mexican. Well, that's fine. I've got that strip mining article you wanted to read over. Oh, uh, tell you what, I I'll probably get that tomorrow. I've got a lunch appointment right now, and then I'm going to do some work over at home. A little uh, I'll leave it on your desk. Good idea. Thanks a lot. Okay. Oh! No. What's I'm sorry. Now? Talking to him just reminded me. i got to get that work that I'm supposed to do at home. Uh, could you hold on for just one minute? One minute and counting. Good. I'll be right back. You just missed him, and he won't be back until tomorrow. Tomorrow? Got it all here. Sorry about the delay. Oh, I'm not sorry at all. I'm sorry? Nothing. Everything all right? Yes, ma'am. Miss Medina, I'm all yours. Hmm, I like the sound of that. Uh, after you. <laughs> Stay tuned for General Hospital following an ABC News Brief next.